couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome guitar lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which not only will I show you dozens of beautifully structured chords, some of the most beautiful chords, the spacious chords, the atmospheric chords you all know. Okay, these types of chords, you know. Even these type of chords, then we might touch them at the end. Uh, okay, uh, this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's still the same type of chord with a lot of space in there with, you know, a landscape, okay? Chords that paint a landscape, a very, very specific color of chords. So um, I'm gonna show you how to build your own chords and how to find your own, you know, atmospheric chords using the method that I use to find chords such as the ones I'm going to show you. But first, before we start, I want to point out that this lesson is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare, if you don't know, is a website for learning courses via video, just like you're doing right now on Lick and Riff. They built a spectacular website with, I think, over 16,000 video courses. I, I'm not exaggerating. They have tons of material from drawing to music to everything you can think of and they've offered Lick and Riffers free access the first 100 people to click the link in the description the first 100 Lick and Riffers to click the link in the description and enter the code will win two months for free to learn any course you want and after those two months they'll charge you about 10 bucks but you can opt out you can pay you can just leave um, no hard feelings they want to, uh, you know, they want Lickin' Refers to come and see what Skillshare has to offer. And I can tell you firsthand because they gave me the free access as well. And I've enrolled into a drawing course and I've always wanted to learn how to draw. And I'm making really nice progress, actually. I'm still not a good, uh, you know, visual artist. I don't think I'll ever be, but I'm enjoying the course. And just click the link in the description. There's a specific link for Lick and Refers to click and enter the code. So uh, why not go and have two months for free video courses? Um, I don't see any downside to it. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this lesson. So now let's start with my favorite chord, okay? The major seven chord. Now there's a C chord. And if you take the finger off of the second string, you get C major seven, but you also have the moving a, a major seven shape, okay? Which if you bar, let's say on seven, and you want to put the A major seven shape, you would put nine, eight, nine on strings two, three, and four. And that way you get E major seven, okay? But you still get E major seven if you just put on the fingers that you're putting on on strings three, four, and five, which means that you have the first and second strings open, Okay, and you have eight, nine, and seven on strings three, four, and five. Okay, and that way you get the atmospheric chord. You know, beautiful, beautifully sounding chord, not just a block chord. You might know this variation by just playing, you know, an uh, E5 chord with uh, 9, 9, and 7 with the open first and second strings. But that's not as impressive as adding the major 7. It changes everything. Instead of 9 on the third string, play 8 on the third string. Okay, and then you have the little finger, the pinky, free for soloing on 9 on the first and second strings. You can, as I showed you before, you can slide into seven on the fifth string and then play the sixth string. And take the pinky on and off the ninth fret, either on the first string or the second. So you see, it's as easy as that 
to find a very nice expression of a chord that you might have heard a million times, but in its block shape. So you can take this, actually, and do the same thing two frets down. For an embellished D major 7 chord. Then you can play with E major 7 and D major 7. And you can, again, use the slide to uh, connect the chords. And you can also go to C. Okay, but this is um, a little bit of a problem. Why? Because the 4 on the 3rd string is also the open second string, it's the same note. So here you can use the fifth, uh, you know, the power chord version, you know, 5-5-3 five, five, with the open first and second strings and then you get the best of both worlds because then you get okay, the, the minor second interval there. Okay? And that kind of changes the atmosphere. the chords and then you can try the same with B okay with B major 7 if you like this harsh sound then keep it if not you can do with the power chord version okay so play around with both versions and see what you like now you can also change the you can take the B major 7 shape and take the bass to F sharp, okay? And then you'll have kind of an F sharp seven sound with an add 11, okay? So you see the open strings add a lot, but you need more than just a major or a minor chord. You need a little bit of an embellishment in the chord to get the real special iteration of the chord. Okay, for example, um, if you have D or D minor, okay, then you can take from the bar, you can take the 7-7 seven, seven on strings 2 and 3, okay, because the open D string is the D bass, and we know that the open second, uh, the open first string fits the chord because, okay, We've all played D sus2. Okay, so we can do the D chord here, okay, on 7 and 7 on strings 2 and 3 with the open 1st and 4th uh, strings. Okay, we can also add the 5th string. Okay, because A is inside the D chord, so we can do an inversion. Or we can do D major 7. Okay? By playing 7 and 6 on strings 2 and 3. Why? Because it's exactly the same idea as before. We took the notes from the A major 7 shape. But we added the open strings. Okay? And we can also do D7 okay? by playing five, uh, 7 and 5 okay? on strings 2 and 3. Or D6 by playing 7 and 4. You see where I'm going with this? You can try your own variations. Okay, but let's go back to D and turn this into D minor. Okay, by playing 6 and 7 on strings 2 and 3. Okay, you see you can solo on the E string on 5, 7, and 8 and open the E string in between. Okay? And immediately you get so much more expression than just a normal D minor chord. And 
if we want to go to a different key, we can take G, okay? We have the normal G chord, and I don't know if you know this, some of you do, if you play country. You know that you can play 1 and 2 on strings 2 and 4 along with it. Okay? Okay? And you can take this shape, actually, and move it around. You can take it two frets up. Okay? You can take it uh, one more fret up. One more. Uh, sorry, two more. And you can take it two more frets up. And two more. Which actually turns it back to G. Okay, the secret here is that when you do this, it actually turns into a C chord, okay? It's a C chord with G on the bass. So if you take it two frets up, it becomes D over A. Okay, with an added embellishment there. Okay, the sixth. And if you take it one fret up, it becomes E flat over B flat. Two frets up, Suddenly it's F, and two more frets up, it's G, it's G over D. Okay? So you see, it's, it's really nice, you just need to find the right, um, the right uh, chord shape that you can move around, okay? As long as it's not your usual major or minor chords. I know that this is a major chord, but when you start moving it around, it gains embellishments. Okay, this is a ninth chord. This is this is actually a major chord as well. This is a sixth chord. Okay, and you can try with the open E string. Okay, C over G. Okay. Hey, you can't use the E string when you play E flat. play it with F, okay, when the bass is on the 8th fret, you have F major 7. And we're just moving the same shape around. And two frets up, it's G6. And if we're talking about G6, we can do this. Okay? We can play, you know that you have G. And in G you have the open 2nd, 3rd, and 4th strings. Okay, so you can play the octave of that, okay, on strings 2, 3, and 4. And when you play it with the open E string, you get G6. Okay, now this isn't a complete chord, so you can play the A bass. Now the A serves as a ninth on the bass, okay, but let's not get too overly theoretical here. Because it sounds nice. But if you take this, okay, and go in the scale, because you have D, and you have C, okay, so you can play notes out of those chords. You can play 10, 11, 12 on strings 2, 3, and 4, okay, with the open E string, with the open 5th string, and then you get a D at 9. frets down, you get the C chord, but with an A bass, turning it into A minor 7. See how easy it is to find them? Then you can do the D again. And you can try C again. Okay, you can play 5-5-5 five, five, five on strings 2, 3, and 4 because it's in the bar. Just take the bar off and you get A major 7. Okay? It's a really nice A major, uh, A minor 7. And you can play 3 on the E string if you like. You can try to play the major 7 shape and see what you get. You can add 9 chords. You can 
can try the seventh shape, okay, from the C7 shape, uh, from the A7 shape, I mean, and see if you like it. If not, move it around. Yeah, it's kind of a diminished chord when you move it around, but you can take A7 and just move these fingers around the neck. fret didn't work but the eighth and the tenth did as well as the twelfth just fingers on strings two and four like a7 okay or a minor seven okay instead of two and two you can play one and two on strings two and four for a minor seven okay you can try moving those around okay doesn't work so one fret Ah, still weird. Hey, you see? Um, you just toy around with it and you find great expressions. Hey, now, uh, what about this chord? Hey? Hey? Why does this work so well? Because it's a minor add nine chord. Okay, um, E minor add nine is E minor with four on the fourth string instead of two. So you get zero 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 four two zero. Okay. And you can play around with this shape and move it around, okay, around the neck. But if you take um, let's go back to E add 9, E minor add 9. If you take the 2 from the A string to the bass string, to the 6th string, you get the 9th as well on the bass. Okay? This is a very, very cool chord. So if you take this shape up and down, On the, the neck, you get a beautiful chord. Okay, so basically, if you look at it theoretically, the sixes and the ninth, okay, the added ninth, the added six, if you have enough space between the notes and you have kind of like a sporadic, you know, the, um, dispersion of the notes around the neck instead of just block shapes, okay, this is also a six nine. Okay, but it's a block chord. Um, while if you take this, okay, you take the C shape, two frets up to D, you get, okay, you get the ninth and the eleven. Okay, the eleven is the fourth. Okay, when you have D, you have D sus two, you have D sus four. If you take the two. Uh, an octave up, it's the ninth. If you take the four an octave up, it's the eleven. That's where you get all those numbers. Um, so basically, you have the two and the four, and also the six. And once you add them to chords that already have all of their notes inside, okay, and you don't replace the notes, you get these. chords okay but as I said you can find it anywhere you can take the F chord and just take the finger off of the first and second strings and then move that around okay or you can have the whole head the whole e -sh e-shaped head Okay? But this is a lot less impressive than this. Okay? 
because you're used to hearing this. So just break it apart and you'll get beautiful chords. Yeah, and this is the secret to really, really terrifically structured guitar chords. You just move chords around without blocking them. You just let them breathe and leave a lot of open strings wherever you can. And the more you try it out, the more chords you find. And I think I gave you a lot of material to already practice uh, in this lesson. So uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.